Boom. Alright, so I got my new mic. Actually, this is not actually a new mic. The only new thing here is this mic stand. And this mic is from my father's stuff. So why not using it and buy it some, you know, upgrade. So yeah, I'm raising this mic now so that we have a uh, clearer uh, mic volume. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so anyway, magandang umaga my friends. This is Ernesto from AR Games and welcome back to Amaros. Now, yeah... Uh, I said this before, but I'm gonna say it, uh, it again that my hard drive of my PC is been crashing and I don't save all the data on it, so that means I delete everything. Also, my outros, my clips, everything. So, yeah, it, this game has been restarted. Just make sure we actually finish the three of them right here in this row like Jack, Seth, and Sky. We finish all of them, so right now we are going to go to the next character so which one are we going to go next okay let's go here okay maybe this guy all right so let's go <sighs> here i go i couldn't help but notice the liar at the back of the room his face a placid mask as the parrot next to him seems locked in a skull <laughs> No three bullet. Despite my best intentions, I couldn't help but overheard snips of what they were saying. Seriously, you're going to make a big deal out of this? Yeah, I am. What are you thinking? That I'd like to have some fun for a change. Then go have some fun, and once you're done, you can stay gone. Neither of them moved for a long moment. The snarl on the parrot's beak grow sharper and it parted long enough for an exhale. Nothing was spoken though. Instead, the parrot turned on his heels with a snort and strode back towards the bar. The lion tried not to watch as the parrot moved through the crowd to the dance floor. His eyes started to their corner, catching a glimpse or two before the crowd engulfed the parrot. After a beat, the lion's expression changed. His emerald green eyes narrowed and scanned the room as the corner of his mouth began to rise. A swing of fear tackled the back of my neck as those eyes settled on me. The lion drew his tongue slowly over his lips and two very wicked looking fangs come into view. He crooked a finger at me, urging me over. Um. Okay. Despite my reservations, I felt drawn in. His smiles grew more predatory and the taut muscles beneath his shirt tensed enticingly as he shifted to give me a once over. Well, will you look at that? I'm surprised you came over to me, but happy to see you here. I was just about to buy myself a drink. Don't suppose you'd like one too, huh? Uh, sure. Sure, I'm a little perch and a drink could help me relax. Sounds good. Let me order something up for us. The lion glanced over at the bar for a moment before walking over and placed an order. Unfortunately, there's nothing more awkward than standing alone in acted nightclubs. Glancing between the club's goers, I was feeling a little exposed until he walked back with two highball glasses. Handing one to me, I glanced down to see what it was. Each glass had two cubes of ice and a sherry, bobbing into an amber beverage. There we go. I always like to have a couple in me when I'm chatting. Takes the edge off. Might even give you something to do other than stare at me. Not that I mind. So, I'm Dustin. What's your name, kid? Kate. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you? Huh, you sure you're in the right place, kid? Anyway, the name's Dustin. What brings you here, Kate? You don't look like the type to cruise bars. And considering how quickly you came over, I figured you don't have a date waiting on you. I could feel my cheeks flush as those hungry eyes kept wandering over me. Rar. No, I just came here with my brother. He'd, well, he'd been wanting to go out of the house and I said I'd come along. You sure there wasn't another reason? Um, oh shitty day. Um, what should I choose? Okay, anyway, how about this one? To be honest, kinda looking for someone to get to know. It's been a rough time recently and being alone has just made it harder. That's adorable. Dear God, you're miles away from the right place for it, but it's adorable. Most people may be here for a quick, but some of them are looking for a little more too. Does that include you too? Maybe. Just we'll have to keep talking to find out. 
What do you mean? Well, I don't do complete strangers and I don't do small talks. Which means I'm gonna need some conversation if you g wanna keep this going. After all, we have both get drinks. It'd be a shame to waste them on empty shatter. Dustin's eyes glimmered a little in the dim light and I felt another tingling up my spine. I suppose it would be a good idea to get to know each other better. Fair enough. Why don't I start? Okay, where should I start? I don't know. Okay, we can go with it. Start with it. That's what we need to start. Let me drink my nutri bullet. Hmm, actually, it tastes good. All right. Who was that guy from earlier? Okay, we may, may ask him. I guess. I don't mean to pry, but I couldn't help but overheard you talking to that guy earlier. What was all that about? You caught that, huh? Not the best way to make a first impression. That was my date for tonight. Emphasize on that was, suppose I should have seen it coming. We'd been in the rocks for a quite some time. What happened? We came here to look for a third. It was his idea to spice up the relationship. Problem is, once he finds one, he doesn't want to share. Mm hmm, sounds like a jerk. Maybe so. Still not happy about it though. Gonna have to get him over out, deal with that fallout. It's way more of a pain than I wanted to deal with. Yeah, but I can't imagine things were going great recently. Harsh but true. It's a relief, but still not something that makes for good conversation. The look on his face suggested I should probably change the subject to something a little more pleasant. Okay, tell me a, a little about you, Dustin. Speaking of conversation, you haven't said much about yourself. Fair enough, but there's not much to tell what I can repeat in public. Hmm, okay. What do you do in living? Currently, I'm slinging coffee and scones at man's best friends. It's a local coffee that most people around here frequent. It's not the most glamorous job, but it pays the bills and my student loans. Oh, you're a college student? Yeah, I'm a college guy. Was, at least. Degree's almost done, but life caught up. Still have a semester or two left before it's official. What were you studying? Law. Actually, arguing cases and defending the undefended always had an appeal. Reality is different, but we all have dreams. I take it things didn't pan out. Had a dose of reality and realized that maybe a high-stress job wasn't the best option for me. Still interested on wrapping up my degree, maybe opening a practice locally. Don't know when that happens though. Dreams are meant to be pursued, something being comfortable more important. Okay, dreams are meant to be pursued. You should go for it. You've certainly gone too far to give up now. Heh, <laughs> maybe I should. I can consider it at least. Oh, okay, um... Next, so about me. I suppose I should talk a little about myself. That's the first step in getting to know someone. So what are you t like when you're not in the club? Unemployed. Just be honest. Well, I'm kinda between jobs at the moment and having to crash with my parents. I know. It sounds bad. Guess that's part of why I came out tonight. To try to get my mojo back. Eh, hard times can hit you out of the blue. I'm certainly not going to give you shit over it. Thanks. It feels a little better to talk about it. You mentioned your brother. Is he staying there too? Yeah, Kobe and I are sharing a room. Just like when we were little kids. Just talking about it makes it kinda embarrassing. Ha, it's a durable kid. Just don't make a habit of it. Maybe I should change the subject to something a little less embarrassing. Uh, let's find somewhere private. No, no, no. Not that. Maybe... Hmm... Somewhere private? Should I go with it? No, no, let's end this. I think that's enough for a good conversation. This is fun, but I don't want to spend all night talking. Well, I finished my drinks and we certainly got to know each other a little. What do you have in mind? Officially, what? It's been a little while, but I think this could qualify as a date. What do you think? You think you can just make the kind of choice and have it stick? Um, I think it's worth giving it a shot. Well, I can't exactly agree with that. We chatted a little more, the smile on his face growing wider. His paws rested on my shoulder and he grew closer enough for me to catch his intoxicating scent. I think we should retire to one of the private booths they've got here. Really? What do you have in mind? I think you've got an idea of it already, kid. 
His paw moved from my shoulder downward, trailing over my back. I could feel the claw tips tickling and teasing me under my clothes. I'll be honest with you, Case. I'm a very private person but I have very particular interests that would involve you. I figure you should know about them. His paw fell through the curve of my rear, squeezing softly as he pulled me closer to him. I could feel his whiskers tickling my cheeks as he whispered to me. I like to tie people up. Um, is this a Fifty Shades of Grey situation? Or should I say Fifty Shades of Prey? I like to control them when we're in the bedroom. I've been picturing you naked since, oh, maybe a few minutes after we started talking. Been fantasizing about what I can do to you and what you can do for me. I can almost see you on your knees in front of me, begging for a teeth, and you look good there. Yep, this is a Fifty Shades of Grey. Gray. Gray Frey Gay. It was hard to keep any remaining composure I had between the cares of his silky fur and the growing warmth in the pit of my stomach. I was getting flushy myself. I can even be a little bit of exhibitionist if need be. He stepped away for just a moment, sliding off his shirt and tucked it into the wristband of his pants before stopping up to me and Lacking his paws behind the small of my back, forcing me forward. What do you say, kid? Between the ample bulge, I could now feel pressing needfully against me and the feeling of my blood rushing everywhere but my brain. I struggled for a response. My attempts were cut short, however, by a sudden vibration against my side. He looked confused for a moment before fishing his phone out of my pocket. Just fucking great. I wonder who texted me. He released me, the ambient glow of the phone lighting up his face on the dimly lit club. At first, he looked frustrated. His brow furrowed as his eyes darted over the screen. However, his expression changed almost immediately after his hands fell to his sides. That's fucking bastard. He sent me a photo of him with the two guys he met there. They're going at it at my apartment. In my damn bed. Says... He's been cheating on me with them for a past couple of months. He shoved his phone back to his pocket and looked up to me. Look, Case, I... Shit. I have to go deal with this. I really don't want the night turned out like this, but... I smiled, meekly. It was all still a little overwhelmed. I'd like to see you again, Case. Preferably when my ex isn't being a total dick. Pulling out a notepad, he scrubbed something down on it and passed it over. Here's my call. Give me a call sometime. I'd like to give this another chance. Throwing his shirt back on, he began to work his way through the crowd. I clutched the paper for a moment as my body began to settle down from its high, slipping it into my pocket. I slowly come back to my senses. And I guess we're done here. I guess. Not yet we're finished our date, at least we're finished our very first date with Dustin, so yeah, in the next episode, we're going to continue it as always, so anyway, thank you guys for watching, if you like this video, click like, if you're new here, subscribe. This is Ernesto, I'm signing out.